Welcome to Dealing with Debt. I'm Paul Bagnall. Thanks very much for being here. If you don't already own property, you may feel like you never will. A new report from CIBC has recently found that 76% of Canadians feel home ownership could be out of reach. High prices are a challenge and saving for a down payment is a challenge. And there is concern about what happens when mortgage renewals take place in coming years with higher interest rates than uh, those mortgages were established at five years ago or so. Doug Hoyes is our expert, of course. He's licensed insolvency trustee and co-founder of Hoyes Michaelos and Associates. He'll talk to us about this subject and would love to hear you give us a call or send us an email with a, a housing-related debt question. Doug, thanks a lot, as always, for joining us. Thanks, Paul. What are we seeing uh, in insolvencies? There is this big worry about what happens with uh, with higher interest rates. Interest rates, of course, are expected to come down shortly, but even when they do, they'll be higher than they were five years ago. Yeah, and the big problem is the lag effect. So I got a mortgage three years ago, and it doesn't matter what mortgage rates are doing now if I've got a five-year mortgage. Right. So the big worry is what happens when people have their mortgage come up for renewal, and there's a lot of people this year and next year who uh, have that problem. Obviously, people who had variable rates or whose mortgage has already come up for renewal are already feeling the pinch and it's very common for those people to be paying an extra thousand dollars a month two thousand yeah. dollars a month on a mortgage payment and that's uh, if your income didn't go up that much you got a problem and that's where we are now uh, Canada one way to uh, make things easier for homeowners is uh, Canada now allows 30-year mortgages what do you think of that well, I don't know if we can solve the debt problem with more debt, but let's let's think about that for a minute. So why are they doing that? Well, because a 30-year mortgage has a lower monthly payment than a 25-year mortgage. So if you look at a mortgage like, I don't know, 800,000 bucks, 5% uh, uh, interest rate, then a 25-year mortgage um, versus a 30-year amortization, you're probably uh, $400 a month savings, something like that. So if the reason you can't buy a house is that extra $400 a month, you can afford $4,300 a month, but you can't afford $4,700 a month, then this is a, a good solution. The other thing people don't factor into that is you qualify at a lower income if the mortgage rate or if the, the payment is lower because it's a multiple of your income. So at that same example, you're looking at needing 127,000 in income to qualify for a 25 year AM, but maybe only 117,000 for a, a 30 year AM. So, okay, if the problem is my income is just a little bit too low, and I can't afford that extra $400 a month, then, then this is a great solution. But I guess my question would be, what's the problem we're trying to solve here? Is that the problem, I can't afford that extra $400 a month? Or is the problem that house prices are too high? And they're high because the interest rates were low for 10 years, we've got massive immigration, which is driving prices up. If we're not gonna solve the underlying problems, and you know, put on more supply, all those other things, then I don't know that this is gonna do a whole lot. It, it seems like a drop in the bucket to me, kind of a pre-election kind of thing, but mm -hmm. I guess we'll find out. Okay, uh, what about the, uh, the question that uh, prospective home buyers always face, a variable rate mortgage or a fixed rate uh, mortgage? Well, it's simple. You pull out your crystal ball, look to see what the future is, and, and make a decision based on that. I have no idea what the future is. We're starting to see more and more people go, oh, now I understand the risk of mortgage rates changing. Yeah. So if you can afford a five-year fixed rate, then I guess you lock in because you know exactly what it's going to be. Right. Now, if you want to speculate and on you're your not, mortgage... And you're not affected when the Bank of Canada increases rates. Uh, exactly and, right. And that flows through almost immediately to variable rate Right, mortgages. absolutely. Or um, a HELOC, which a lot of people have, which adjusts every month. So I think you got to look at your own situation and say, what can I afford? And if I can afford the rates as they are now and I'd like to lock in, great. But if it's a little high, and I think rates are going to come down, well, I guess you can decide to speculate if you want. It's interesting to hear you say that you don't have a crystal ball. A lot of people feel they need a crystal ball to, to, uh, to, uh, to accurately or, or uh, to, to make the best choice on variable versus fixed. Right. And, but there's I mean, no way of knowing. There's no way of knowing. And you've reported on this for many years. We remember the Bank of Canada governor saying, oh, interest rates are going to stay low forever or whatever. I'm misquoting, but I think that was the gist of it. And sure enough, that didn't happen. So who are you supposed to trust? And the answer Answer is well. I guess there's nobody you can trust. You got to do the stress test for yourself. Can I afford the rates as they are now? Am I willing to lock in? And then you make the decision based on that. What is negative equity? Negative home equity. 
it's when my house is worth a million dollars, but the mortgage is higher than that. In other words, if I was to sell the house and pay the real estate commissions, pay off the mortgage penalties and so on, I end up with less money than what I need to pay off the mortgage. Now, that has not been an issue for the last decade because house prices just kept going up and up and up. So even if you only had a small uh, down payment, you still had positive equity because the house went up 20% yesterday. You didn't have to worry about it. But if you bought your house at the peak in 2022 and had a 5% down payment and that condo or house has gone down by 10%, you now have negative equity. If you sell the house, there will be a shortfall. So you either can't sell the house, you just gotta keep paying the mortgage and hope the mortgage goes down and the house price goes up, mm -hmm. or you walk away from it, you've got a shortfall, and you're probably talking to a guy like me to deal with that. How common is that, people walking away? At the moment, not very common, because again, unless you bought it at right at the peak and you're now selling all of a sudden two years later, it's not an issue. If you bought your house in the past, you're good. But what's gonna happen as time goes on? Are we gonna see more and more of that? Well, I think so. Unless real estate prices spike up, or interest rates spike down, we're gonna see more and more instances of negative equity. This was a big issue 10, 15, 20 years ago. Um, it used to be, I mean, you go back to 2011, it was almost 20% of our clients who owned a home had negative equity. And now house prices were obviously half what they, they were now. Now, it's, it's not an issue. When we talk again in a year, I think it will be more and more of an issue as people who bought recently and decide I can't afford, because I went variable, my, in, my mortgage payment's gone way up, I've got to dump my house, I think it's gonna be a bigger problem in the future. Do you expect rising insolvencies in years ahead as these uh, fixed rate mortgages renew? Yes, I do. And it's not just the mortgages, it's everything else. We've got record credit card debt, we've got record everything. So yes, I, I would absolutely expect that we will see higher insolvencies, and, and we already have so far this year, and I think that trend will continue. That's a great